Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video that was asked for by my patrons. I did a live stream, well, just finished it actually, and patrons were asking about um, some projects, what my thoughts were on them, and I was talking about how I use GitHub to keep track of it, whether it's iNav, Betaflight, Gyroflow, or some of the DIY head tracker stuff. The, using GitHub, which is what the developers are using to collaborate and share stuff, is available for you to view as a general Joe public. And it's a great way to keep an eye on what is going on. Not only is it a great way to keep an eye on what's going on, it's also the way that you can add specific things. If you have a request for a feature, or maybe you found a bug in the software, you can report it to the developers so that they can get it fixed. So being able to navigate your way around GitHub is something that can be incredibly useful. And I, when I've got a bit of spare few minutes, will kind of dive in, have a look at what's going on with iNav, have a look at what's going on with Betaflight, and a couple of the other key projects too, just to see what's new. So let me go onto the computer and show you how I use things like GitHub to keep abreast of what's happening with my favorite projects here in Radio Control. So this is where we're starting with github.com, but I wouldn't start here. What I would do is I would search for GitHub and then put the name of the project that you're interested in. Let's go for iNav. And here we are at the top, we have the pages for the project. So this is iNav flight iNav. If we click at the top level directory, you can see here that actually this project has lots of different things. We have iNav itself, we have the configurator, we have the widget for Open and Edge TX, we have the black box log viewer and some other things. But let's just go into iNav first of all where we were. This looks incredibly complicated, but don't worry too much about that. It's actually simpler than you think. Scrolling down here, we have all the blurb about how it runs and the bits and pieces. We have all these folders with stuff. The way that I do it is I will go into the issues, which is here at the top, and you can see the open issues and the closed issues by clicking on here. And we can see at the moment that for the iNav project, there are currently, as I record this, 340 open issues. We could then uh, have a look at what's going on and see whether or not there's something that's related to an issue that we've got. Or similarly, we can also see what's already been fixed. Amazingly, this project has already fixed and sorted over 4,000 issues. And these just aren't problems. Some of them are also things that pilots like me have asked for. So if I, for example, look at the authors, if I just search for Painless360, then here's all the ones that have mentioned me. Some of them are things like adding the automatic servo trim for fixed wing. This is something that I asked for back in 2020. It was something that RD Pilot did and I really wanted it and they added it, which is great. But there's also other things in here as well that I've asked for too. So for example, there are four open ones. So there's one that a Patreon asked me about and I realized it couldn't be done, so it's in here. And also having context sensitive OSD layouts. So you can ask stuff in here. The trick is with this is I would absolutely, whenever you're doing this stuff, is if you're asking for a feature addition, which is what this is, and you can add this just by clicking the new issue button here and filling it in, giving the developers as much information as you can. So version numbers, specific things about how you reproduce the issue. If you've taken video of it, put a link here to that video so they can see it. We'll stop some of the to and fro, them asking, is it on the latest version? Those kind of things. Because if you give them all the information up front, not only is it easy for them to understand what's going on, there's more chance of them picking it up quite quickly rather than having to chase you down for a couple of months to get all the information to try and reproduce the problem. But if we just go back and we have a look at this, let's come out of this, let's get rid of the author. Again, if you have a specific issue and see whether or not someone else is having it, we search for ESC and hit enter, we can see all the ESC related things that are currently here. And if you are having a similar problem, you can kind of see where that issue is and what is going on to get it sorted out. However, the way I use it is I look at the milestones. It's a great way to see where everything is up to and what has been included and what is yet to be done on that particular milestone. So let's continue to look at the iNav stuff. 
So over here, we have the milestones. These are the versions usually. So if I click on milestones, we can see that version seven is almost done, 88% complete. There's 11 open and 83 closed, and there's stuff going into the future stuff or future versions. Let's click on seven. And here we can see that there's 11 open issues that they're currently working on. So they're allowing rearm. I did a video on that recently about how to add that in. It's actually been added as a standard thing. Uh, GPS fixed estimation, remaining flight different values missing in OSD. You can see there's a number of things they're currently working on. However, 83 of them are closed. And by scrolling through here, you can see all the new stuff that has been added, that's been improved. And here at the end, you can see these little notes that are here for the developers. So for example, this one's a font change. It's gonna need some changes in the release notes. There's gonna be a change needed in configurator. This one, still a little bit of testing is required even though it's complete. And this is a really cute way in how I just keep track of what the project is up to. But let's have a look and see if we can figure out what's going on in another project. Let's, for example, look at something like Gyroflow. So here on the computer, what we're going to do is search for GitHub Gyroflow and hit enter. And there is right at the top. Again, looks very, very similar. So we can see here that we have the gyro for gyro flow project. I can't say it, I can use it. Here's all the latest stuff. Again, what I would normally do is jump into issues, see what open issues there are. Even in a project like this, there's 48 currently open, 540 closed. So you can see what's going on. If you have an issue, again, you can search for it in here to see whether or not the other people have reported it. If they have, you can kind of keep a track of it. If not, then you can add a new issue. But what I would do is have a look at the milestones. So it looks like the next version that's out is, looks like 1.5.3, looks like 1.6 is still being worked on. But here you can see that it's only 53% complete. There's lots of work to go here. This doesn't look like it's coming out anytime soon as I'm recording this. So let's look at 153. Here's all the stuff that's currently open that the developers are currently working on. And, but interestingly, if we look at the closed stuff, we can see that a lot of this is fixing of bu bugs when it crashes on open. There's an enhancement here for a new codec, but you can kind of get a very good idea of exactly what's going on. So let's do one more. Let's have a look at uh, something like beta flight. So we'll do GitHub beta flight and then there it is. And here it is, looks very similar again. Guess what? We can scroll down, there's loads of information in here about what the latest releases and stuff is. But what we'll do is go into issues. You see here that this very active project has 212 open issues, 5,187 closed. Again, we can search for the specific things that we're interested in and find out if someone else has already had the issue. But what I tend to do is go to the milestones. And here there's lots of different milestones. Some may major and some minor releases, so you can kind of see which ones are going to be next. So if you look at something like 442, this looks like it's 100% complete um, at the moment. 443 is 88 complete, so this looks like it's the next one. So going in here, we can say that the only one that's open is something about dynamic min throttle uh, with RPM filter disabled. If we go into look what's closed, you can see exactly what has been added. Things have been fixed, things have been changed. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in this. If you use these open source projects, GitHub is a great way to view what's going on, to see what's the next version is gonna have in it in advance of it coming out, but also is a great way if you've exhausted all the other avenues to let the developers know that you've discovered a bug or a feature that doesn't work as intended. As with all of these open source projects, if you are using them, getting the value from them, if there is some kind of donate button or buy me a coffee for the project that you are using for free and enjoying, my personal tip would be send them a couple of books, let them know that you appreciate their work. But hopefully that's helpful for those of you who now know how to look around GitHub and you can keep an eye and track your favorite stuff. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. 
If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.